Hey, did you know that there are many misunderstandings in Final Fantasy XIV that people don't realize? Here are five that I've noticed over the years. 1. Mass pulling in dungeons. So pulling a lot in dungeons is great and all, but it always depends on DPS. Majority of the time, when I start a dungeon as a tank, the healer says, you could pull big. Which is fine and all, but then when you do pull big and the DPS isn't there to assist, then it's a pain in the ass. So when DPS is not AoEing, then the pulls take longer, which results in less cooldowns for the next pull, etc. and etc. And the healer, low MP, yada yada. So it's like DPS is the main focus here. And a lot of the times, DPS do not AoE at all. Like I've watched people and they don't AoE. And usually the rule of thumb of AoE is. If there's three or more mobs, you AoE or use your AoE combo. Like, it's sad that when you're DPSing as a tank and you do more than a DPS, that, that's really sad. So, to get this straight, that it is dependent on healers and tanks, but it's more dependent if you want to pull big on DPS. Number two. Dance partner. So this one got me kind of confused at first. Like, I was doing some random testing on dance partner a little while ago. I thought... Putting two dance partners on one person would work, but it didn't. Like the S-Spirit buff is on there, but not the damage buff. You can't stack the damage buff on one person. But there's an exception. If you have a, let's say for example, a party of four, or like a light party, and you have two dancers, they can put dance partner on each other. But if you have a party of eight, and then everyone's all like dance partner one person, that's a no-go. So to sum this up, if you have a light party, and you have two dancers as DPS, they can put it on each other, the dance partner on each other. But if you have a full party, and then you have multiple dancers, they would be wise to put it on different DPS, but never the same DPS. So for example, let's say Samurai Joe over here has one dance partner from Jim Bob, and then another dance partner from Bob Fred. It's just like, it does not work. The only thing that's added on there is the S-Spirit not the damage buff. Let's talk about number three, markers. This one is a favorite because whenever I do content of any sorts with like just random like 24 man, for example, I see people with the stack marker which they are clearly supposed to stack. Well, if you played for a while, you're supposed to stack. They take that and they run to Mars with it. And I'm over here saying, all right, see you later. But there's a little Imgar link is that how you pronounce it, Imgar? I don't know. But I'll put that link down below in the description. And it'll tell you all about the different types of markers and a little bit about them. So please look at it. It'll help a lot. And people who've been playing for a while, that they'll, they'll like that too. Number four. Curing on the healer. I've noticed this a lot with healers lately. In dungeons, for example. Uh, the healers really want to keep everyone's HP 100%, and there's no need for that. It's more MP efficient to cure 2 than it is to spam cure 1, because you'll be able to use damage spells to do more damage to get the dun dungeon faster, dungeon done faster than spam and cure. I've also noticed people trying to spam cure 1, or like benefit 1, or just basically benefit or cure one to get the proc which is wasting MP just to get the 15% proc so it's kind of like baiting yeah and later on the levels you will be getting better ways to keeping people alive more efficiently than spamming cure or care too so you got instance instant casts I should say and this one's for the white mage just because the numbers greater doesn't mean it's better for example, Cure 1, Cure 2, and Cure 3. I've seen people, like in Garuda Normal, for example, spamming Cure 3 to cure that one guy that's taking 20 damage. It, and then the guy's like, where's my MP? So it's better to use Cure 1 than it is to use Cure 3. And then it's better to use Cure 2 if the guy's taking a lot of damage. I could keep going on about healers and the bullshit that they have to deal with the cure one through three or the benefits, but that's just a little tidbit about this one. And if you have more, you can leave in the comments below. Let's go on to the next one. Number five, 
tank pulling, and DPS. So this happens a lot in any dungeon, to be honest. So you're just some random average Joe Schmo trying to pull mobs in a dungeon as a tank, right? So you're proceeding to do that, and then you got dumbass McGee over here going, Contra 6! Oh, I got aggro! Like, seriously, just let the tank pull, and when he's done pulling, then you can go, Contra 6! Or whatever AoE spam ham move you use. So the moral of this is let the tank establish aggro on pulling big mobs, or big mob packs. Let's talk about some bonus stuff. So let's say you got an eight-man party going on, or you're looking for a party party finder, or you're making a party finder, for example. You do not need two range and two melee for a party comp. What does that mean, you say? Okay, let's just say you're doing current content, for example. You do need two tanks and two healers. And there used to be two melee and two range. But now you really do not need that. But what you do need is one of each type. And by that I mean one physical range, one caster, and one melee. And the reason behind that is for the party bonus. And that gives you the juicy 5% bonus of your main stat. Juicy. But what about the 8th person you say, right? You got 7. You got tanks, 2 tanks, 2 healers. And then the three DPS, so you got the three range, caster, and melee, right? The beauty about that, it could be anything. Well, to a ex certain extent, of course. And that is, do not have a duplicate class. So let's say, for example, you have a samurai. You, do, you shouldn't get another samurai if you're doing like current content, like I mentioned before. But this is where it comes into play that you do not need two range two melee so you can have let's just say a machinist red mage and a dancer plus a samurai just make sure it's not a duplicate class what happens when you have a duplicate class in your party well your limit break is going to be shit. that's for one another bonus thing to talk about the gcd so the GCD is slower, but you got more action per minute, so it feels like you're doing more. So you're like, all right, two and a half seconds to whack off. No, I'm just kidding. So you attack two and a half seconds, you weave in abilities. Hi, yeah, yeah. So you got like your blood, blood for blood, or your dragon eye, just to sweet weave in two things in one. And usually you would try to get those in within the GCD, but sometimes you can't do that because latency in this game is horrendous. Here's a little tip that I got. Well, I wouldn't say tip, a little, just a little tidbit of information. So the Lambreth of Ancient Dragon doesn't necessarily need to be pulled all the way to the edge. I mean, it helps prevent the skeletons getting there, but honestly, people don't care about that anymore. Like, all the times I've done it, just the past week alone, skeletons blow up all the damn time. So just get healed. Easy as that. So just AoE heal. And one more note about this is that shields do not work on the explosions from the skeletons. It just ignores it. Do you have any misunderstandings that you have? Feel free to comment below. Alright, thanks for listening to my TED Talk, and have a great day.